It's now my great pleasure to welcome the cast of the film Looper. Argo, Spring Breakers, Cloud Atlas, Hotel Transylvania, Silver Linings Playbook. It just feels like a real film festival for the community. It's very exciting for me to be here to support a film. I wanted to show Toronto the way I experience it. We want people to like our movies and understand them. What makes it really special for me is the fact that the audiences have responded the way they have. If I got lucky in the first two, this was the lottery. I feel like I hit the jackpot. I mean, I can't believe that I'm sitting at a table, you know, flanked by these people. Every producer I've ever worked with is in that garden. And a couple, I, a couple I invented. You have to be faithful to what they really were. But I certainly wouldn't, you know, to think that we are godfathering anything. I do. And that's why he's got the beard. <laughs> the most nice thing the press have ever done. Oh, <laughs> I was really happy to find out this is where we were coming. I said, I'm in. The festival of the people who live here. That was amazing. Our moderator for today is Cameron Bailey, and it is now my pleasure to welcome the directors from a number of films in this year's program. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Cameron Bailey, I'm the Artistic Director of the Toronto Film Festival, and uh, I guess Athens was my idea. Um, working with Dimitri Epides, our longtime programmer who is based in the city of Athens, has lived there for much of his life, and uh, happens to be here this afternoon. Dimitri Epides, can you say hello? <laughs> We had been discussing for many, many months uh, the uh, remarkable uh, development of new filmmakers coming out of the city of Athens, and uh, we were very fortunate to be able to put together the City to City, to City Spotlight this year. Uh, we want to uh, have an opportunity to share some of the ideas behind the films that are coming out of Athens right now, so please let me introduce our panel for today. Uh, Yorgos Servetas is the director of Standing Aside Watching, our opening night city to city film about a woman who returns home to find a series of troubled relationships that she left behind. His previous feature is called The Way Things Are Determined. Alexandros Avranas is the director of Miss Violence, a chilling drama about an 11 year old girl's suicide and the family secrets that surround it. Miss Violence just won the Copa Volpi Award for Best Actor in Venice. His previous feature was titled Without. Yanis Sakaridis is the director of Wild Duck, the story of telecom engineers who set out to investigate hacker activity and make a scandalous discovery. He served as an editor for numerous television programs and has made several shorts, and this is his feature debut. Argiris Papadimitropoulos is the director, co-director of Wasted Youth, a drama based on a real-life event of a frustrated policeman and teenage skateboarder crossing paths. His previous feature is a film called Bank Bang. Alongside him is Jan Vogel, the co-director of Wasted Youth, who grew up in Ecuador and Hamburg, Germany, and studied at the American Film Institute. Wasted Youth is his first feature. Vanos Anastopoulos is the director of The Daughter, a thriller about a teenage girl who abducts a young boy. He took up filmmaking after studying philosophy, and his films include the documentary Post Selene and the features All the Weight of the World and Correction. 
Aaron Hughes and Christina Kutsospiru are the directors of To the Wolf, a documentary drama hybrid about a goat herding community in rural Greece. They come from a, a visual arts background, and this is their first feature. And Menelaos Karamagiolis, I was doing so well, is the director of JACE, Just Another Curious Elephant, an epic picaresque misadventure uh, through a Athens' seedy underbelly. He's worked extensively, extensively as a writer on television documentary series, and his first film is called Blackout, P.S. Red Out. Welcome to all of you, filmmakers. Now, uh, many of us who don't live in Greece and don't know Athens well know it first as a tourist city, and more recently we've come to know it as a city of protests, political protests about the economic uh, situation there. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit more about what uh, Athens has meant to you in terms of its cultural climate? What is it in the city of Athens that has influenced, if at all, the films that you've brought here to Toronto? Maybe we can start with Yorgos. Oh. I think that in Athens uh, now there is a climate of frustration and also a climate of uh, questioning uh, the political uh, power and the will of the government to, um, to make things better there. I don't believe that too many people believe this in Athens and uh, there is a huge uh, a wave of, of protests against uh, government, against what is the state now and there's also widespread violence in everyday living. Alexandros, any other filmmakers? What from Athens has influenced your films? Mm, not so much, because uh, I, would like, uh, I try to make a film in Athens, but uh, with the absent, uh, absence of Athens, because uh, Athens has problems that uh, also in uh, Europe it's the same. So you can see Athens, but you can see Europe. Yanis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Athens at the moment uh, is, um, at least uh, I can say, is a very interesting place to be uh, from all wrong reasons that we know uh, from first pages. And uh, also uh, culturally um, is an explosion in, in uh, all arts uh, uh, because it's important to resist uh, towards uh, what's going on. Uh, by creating something. Uh, it could be a painting, a poem, or, uh, or a film in this case. Um, the influence in my movie, I, every single bit that we live is, is, is far more uh, 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 extreme than mm, that, uh, uh, any script, uh, script you can write. Is, is, uh, um, so um, I would say we in, in, in the film, uh, we, uh, where Jan Vogel is the um, uh, cinematographer, we tried to be fresh. Um, I lived in London for 18 years, so I came back on the wrong side of the decade. <laughs> um, so I still have fresh um, um, eye towards Athens, and uh, we tried to create a, a sort of paradise in the first kind of look that becomes a hell for this woman. So, um, uh, and that's what Greece is at the moment, so. Thank you. Are Greece? Yeah, in, in our film, uh, Greece is kind of a, the Athens is like kind of a protagonist in the film. Mm -hmm. It's not just a backdrop and a, the place where the things take place. From the beginning with Jan, we thought that we're making a film about Athens and the way the city is changing. Jan, I, I was, I'm a native, you know, I was raised and, you know, I was born and raised in Athens. Jan uh, was coming for the last 10 years quite often and, you know, we sat down together and we saw the city changing so much uh, day by day, like, but really, really much. So we decided to make a film about it and yeah, mm -hmm. Athens to, for us is like very important in the film. Yeah, and for you as someone who wasn't born and raised in Athens, what were you drawing on in terms of the, the city and, and if it did inspire Wasted Youth? I mean, what, in <coughs> what inspired Wasted Youth? Yes, the city in one aspect that so m it's such a um, compact place. So many people live in a small place, so it really um, 
I mean, a third of the population of Greece lives there. So you have, for me, it's like, um, it's this chaos. It's, um, it reflects all the, it reflects society. And um, Athens inspired it, but it was inspired by an incident that happened in Athens, which for me was showing some conflict in society, you know, like when a, it's about a policeman and it's about a young guy and about what happens in between them. And I don't know if I want to tell now too much, but um, what I felt there is that these different generations that live together, there is um, there's something that separates them to like in, in attitude, you know, mm -hmm. like the young people, the way they grew up, they grew up in a different way than <coughs> maybe their parents did or their grandparents. So there is friction. And in a place like Athens, this friction is like really in one spot. You know, it's very, um, it's like a combustion chamber. I don't know if that's the right word. So, um, so that is what Athens, that's the character of Athens there, that like nobody can escape each other. Everybody is like on top mm. of each other. Kind of a pressure cooker. Yeah, pressure cooker. Uh, Thanos, uh, your film, The Daughter, uh, takes place in the context of the protests and the economic crisis that in, that's uh, sparked those protests. Uh, what, in what way did the city influence your film? Well, I, I was born in Athens, and um, my mother's house, I mean, my grandfather's house, when he bought it, he thought it was in a nice neighborhood. <laughs> And uh, during the 60s and 70s, it was a kind of the middle class neighborhood. And uh, in a way, living there, I experienced the social changes that are happening every day. It's an area near the center of Athens, but in the, let's say, in the underbelly of uh, the city. And there's a, an incredible uh, change the last at least 20 years, and there's also a school in front of my, my house. So I see also young children going there every day. It's a constant uh, inspiration because you, you, you ask questions mm -hmm. every day walking in Athens. Hmm. I mean, this is what's happening in Athens. You're asking questions. Okay. Ara and Christina, your film takes place uh, far away from Athens, um, but is there anything about the cultural climate of that city that has uh, been an influence in your filmmaking? Um, I think it was interesting with our film because we went somewhere, we tried to go as far away from Athens as possible, <laughs> and over the course of making it, it kept coming back to the film and kept becoming a protagonist, like you were saying. Um, but in terms of it, I mean, it's, it doesn't feature in the film at all, but it, it, the character of it, I think, kind of comes across. Yeah, it seeps through uh, the media in the film, um, and it's more the psychological stress that yeah. comes uh, and reflects on the people in the, in the countryside. And I guess by isolating yourself from the chaos that Athens can be, uh, both good chaos and and kind of the stressfulness uh, at this, especially this time, um, we kind of resulted in receiving uh, this calm effect, um, but the psychological stress mm -hmm. uh, also like it was very evident in the characters. Thank you. Um, Menelaos, and for anyone else, I'm also interested in the other aspects of culture that are going on right now in Athens, uh, whether it's visual arts or writing, uh, poetry, uh, theater. Um, is there a kind of a cultural climate of which filmmaking is also a part? And, and maybe you can begin, Menelaos, and others can jump in. First of all, Athens is half of Greece, and Athens uh, mostly seems a nightmare, which is uh, <laughs> amazing and attracting and a film by itself uh, in Athens you can find uh, everything and especially hidden parts which you have to discover them with guide or not guide but you have to discover them in all these parts uh, what what we mean art nowadays what what is real art you can find it there and especially filming it's very difficult to do films in Greece but uh, Athens is an amazing set for films and full of stories. Many of us would have seen the films of Athena Rachel Sangari and Yorgos Lanthimos in the last few years. They've certainly won awards at film festivals and uh, there came to be a kind of style that seemed to be uh, common among the, the films from Athens that were, were becoming successful internationally, a kind of 
uh, severity, very severe kind of filmmaking, extreme in some ways, but uh, with a very dry sense of humor, very stripped down kinds of films. And, and some of your films also share this style, although they're, they're not common. I think it's always risky to talk about films as having a, a, a similar style, but are there any formal elements of your films that you feel you share in common, uh, either as the filmmakers here or with other uh, filmmakers working in Athens right now? I think that uh, my film hasn't doesn't have any common uh, references in style with those films. And what I try to do in my film is to um, illustrate or to explore this uh, new Greek landscape, that um, which is a thing that uh, I couldn't find the reference that I needed. For example, it was uh, much easier to find the reference to um, what happened to American landscape or elsewhere, and uh, there was no such a thing that I could um, be based on for Greece, I think. And um, this was kind of my um, ambition with this film, a way to illustrate, to depict this new Greek landscape. Mm -hmm. um, would any of the, uh, the rest of you, any other filmmakers want to comment on, is there a kind of a common style that's emerging mm -hmm. right now? I think um, uh, the main influence is uh, from uh, Athena and Yorgo is, uh, first of all, uh, um, uh, the confidence and uh, the inspiration to express ourselves uh, and to, to get out and, and um, freely uh, create something that, um, that it will, it will uh, Go globally. It will. It will travel, and it will uh, um, uh, give a message. Um, and uh, secondly, I, I, you know, this is a very long discussion we all make uh, about the influence and style. Uh, certainly, uh, Greek films look better uh, uh, since Athena and and uh, Yorgo. Uh, uh, Maybe is our eyes that uh, try to discover more and uh, to see uh, the better side of what we do, or maybe some people, uh, uh, you know, stylistically, they either borrow or they uh, influence or inspire. Um, but is uh, uh, for me there is a uh, there is a lot of different genres and styles, and uh, there is a pluralism. Uh, which um, uh, sometimes the the particular style is preferred by uh, by some of the European programmers, uh, but there is a lot of going on outside mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, so can I, yes, can please, I Thanos. Something? Well, we, we somehow we have to put all this into a kind of historical context. I mean, all this. I mean, generation, I don't like the term, but let's use it for the sake of the conversation, uh, has started in the early 2000s, a little bit before the Olympic Games. All of us have made from one to three films uh, in this period. Uh, in the beginning, there was this hope there were money and everything, and after a little bit of the Olympic Games started the collapsing of the economy. But in the same time, what is happening is the thematic of the film starts to investigate the new Greek identity. It's like if you, let's say, like you're trying to see under the carpet what there is, and you're realizing that there are many things underneath hidden, and you're starting to explore. And when the money goes away, we share as well common production practices. All films are low budget, mm -hmm. so you make choices aesthetic more radical because you don't have money. Mm -hmm. Then That's interesting. Y the, the aesthetics become more radical because you don't have money, yes. not more conservative. Y yes, yes, That's because you have to make choices, radical choices, because mm -hmm. you don't have money. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then all these films are made also by collaboration with the help of uh, the actors and uh, our technicians who work for very little fee, sometimes with no fee. Uh, so it's a collaborative thing. We are 
filmmakers that speak with each other, know each other, exchange ideas. The one film of the one is, in a way, influences the other. It's a constant dialogue. So this is how you can find affinities from one film uh, to, to the other. So, yeah. You see the credits of our films. I mean, we're all more or less in each other's yes. credits the same somehow. Persons. I mean, at least a thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. But sometimes more. Uh, one is producing, one is, uh, another one is playing in each mm -hmm. other's film. I mean, we're all doing something for each other's film. So That's interesting. I'm, I'm trying to get at exactly what is the nature of that kind of collaboration, yeah. what you share, what you don't share. You're all but individual I'm filmmakers. You've got your own sensibilities. Your films could be very, very different. And yet there are some things that seem to be common somehow. Um, and I, I guess uh, for me, I'm, I'm curious to know, do you see comparisons with other locations? Like, uh, you know, Bu there was a moment where in Bucharest, Romania, there was a certain kind of filmmaking coming out from yeah. many different films. But it looks more, like a, looks more like a wave, this Romanian thing. I mean, uh, stylistically, the, their films are more like, you know... Um, Coherent, let's say. Yeah, let's say. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing with the Greek films is, like, they're so much different. I mean, you can't really, they can't really qualify for a wave, yeah. for, but uh, there's so much different, but somehow you can see that there's some thematic, I mean, there's some topics that everybody's dealing with. I mean, most of the films, they put in, uh, under the magnifying lens, you know, the, the, the Holy Greek family thing. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, family is like something like huge in Greece. It's holy and you can't really touch it. <laughs> and now that's now we're done with that. I mean, most of the films somehow deal with it yeah. in a very like strict way. They put it in the corner and they go like, you know, now we have to examine it. Something doesn't work here. So it's uh, you know, in a country like Greece, when you when you shake the foundations because the family is supposed to be like the foundation, it's like saying that. Hey guys, we need to to change things here. Mm. Alexandros, would you agree your film is, I think, one of those films that does challenge the Greek family? Um, I don't agree about the new wave or about the stylistic uh, form of uh, Greek, Greek new cinema because uh, I think that we are all living in Greece and what we share is that we have a bad time in Greece. That's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she shows sure that you have a bad time in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's say that instead of uh, using the term uh, wave that has something in common, we can try to use the word uh, tsunami, which has <laughs> something <laughs> more, <laughs> more, <laughs> more chaotic. <laughs> more chaotic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's a bit of catastrophe in it, so uh -huh. which you seem to have a wonderful sense of humor about catastrophe and chaos and bad things happening in Greece. Uh, uh, this isn't a place that you just want to escape. No, we would like to change it. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Um, and do you think your films can help do that? Um, I believe that um, what I agree with uh, Argyris and Athanos is that um, if we want to change our society, we have to change our negative side of the society. Mm -hmm. Not to show the good things, but uh, to make a discussion about the negative sides and the bad things that happen. So I think... Uh, we're trying hard, everybody here, to m make a little, give a little peace in this mm -hmm. war, or in this, war, you know, this battle. Mm -hmm. When we were putting this series together, one of the things we realized once we had the ten films, Dimitri and I, is that these were not necessarily films that would be fully embraced by the Greek community here in Toronto because they're all very challenging, as you say. They don't just show the nice, pretty side of Greece, and especially if you're an immigrant, sometimes you just want to celebrate your home country or your home city. These films don't do that, not one of them. Not really. <laughs> How do they play in Greece, in Athens? Is there an audience for your work? Are, are they, is the audience challenged by your work, or do they embrace it? Uh. <laughs> it's not to start if I start to speak. So um, I think that we, um, we had a lot of uh, long we had a long period in Greece that uh, I don't know what happened, but the films wasn't so communicating, didn't communicate with the audience. But I think that the new generation, what is trying to do is to be really honest and to bring the audience back in the theaters because we don't have to. We must not forget that uh, cinema is. Uh, 
popular art for, for the people. And uh, we're trying not to be autistic or not to be um, arrogant. So I would like, it's my opinion for my film, I would like to come in the theater, in the cinema, and I would like to have a conversation, my film, with the, with the viewer, with the um, audience. And uh, I want them to understand that I am with them and not to judge them. Anyone else like to speak about how your films engage yeah. with an audience in Greece? Well, I think um, a director is not there to act as a psychologist and make someone feel better. Mm -hmm. They're obviously presenting what they feel and their expression of w what is reality to them and what what is life. And um, so, yeah, I, I, th I guess it's like the Greeks will have a hard time accepting these films, but I think they have to be open to them. Um, and yeah react as they react. I mean, I, our film hasn't shown in Greece yet, but um, I can imagine, I mean, even in the village when we were shooting, people were always wondering why we were looking at the negative uh, negativity, or they were thinking, why, why, why are you not looking at the sunny side of things? But, I think you um, deliberately avoided the sunshine in your film, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> deliberately <laughs> in times, uh, but uh, it was quite, I mean, yeah. Um, but the thing is, like, you, you you're actually just um, expressing your own emotions. Uh, you're not trying to make someone feel good, I don't think. Others agree? <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna open it up to questions um, in a moment. Uh, I wanted to ask though if you had allies, uh, advocates for your films in Athens? Are there film critics, are there journalists who are writing positively about your work? Do you feel that people are championing your, your films to an audience? Yeah, I think um, uh, the, the sort of uh, uh, critic uh, uh, position has completely turned around the last uh, few years. Uh, Greek most I mean, as far as I remember, uh, only few Greek uh, filmmakers, they were um, uh, treated, uh, to say, nicely from the uh, film critics. Uh, the last few years, uh, the whole thing is, is changed. <laughs> probably the films got better, or I don't know, but uh, probably the generations are, are uh, closer to the film analysis. More people came from abroad, uh, from universities and uh, academic uh, skills. And um, uh, the film critics embraced this. And uh, um, most of the time, they tried to promote our work. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, probably I, I got married to a film critic. So <laughs> <I> <laughs> <laughs> That was a smart move. <laughs> Anyone else? Do you have? Well, yeah. I cannot um, understand why do we have to talk about Greek society or Greek audience as a whole. I mean, Greek society is divided as any society is, and uh, maybe a little more in Greece. So I believe that any film is a statement, and. Uh, as a statement, there are some people supporting, some people like it, and some people are against it. It's not um, the audience or society as a whole, and I don't think that anybody um, can ask for that. Mm -hmm. No, nobody can ask for that, of course, but somehow I feel like we'll like, celebrate it a little bit more. Yes. But it's because the films are doing, I mean, the films are good, and they're doing good abroad and everything, so, you know, we created a buzz somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and does that translate into access to theaters? Can you get into the theaters that you want to in, in Athens? Or in <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about that. How do people see your films? I mean, uh, well, it's not all the films the same. I mean, <laughs> uh, some, some of them are doing better than the others. But generally, the art house audience in Greece is still like very, very small. Very and yeah, we're saying this, you know, that you're somehow trying to educate the audiences and tomorrow they're going to be more and more and more. But uh, the numbers do not say the same. So but this is kind of 
sad, but on the other hand, I mean, that's it. I mean, we, that's not gonna stop you from making films and from trying to to get people to watch them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, s- yeah. S- if I can add, I-, I think there is a problem with film education in Greece, and this is because. Let's say the majority of people in Greece have remained in the film language of the 60s when we had this kind of popular films, commercial popular films. Uh, comedies. Comedies and melodramas mostly. Yeah. Uh, and then there was this rupture with the new Greek cinema, Theo Angelopoulos and his generation. And uh, for a certain moment, this was also linked to the politics. But after a while, this language didn't have access to people simply put because the television continued to play these films of the 60s uh, as the programs and when the private television was founded in 89 they continued to have as programs the same old films so in a way if someone every day sees uh, these kind of films and he skips stages of film language, if he goes to see Dogtooth, uh, he's shocked because he's missing something in between. Mm. So this is something we have to, I mean, we're making more films in order to close this gap. Mm. You mentioned um, Angelopoulos, who is uh, probably the Greek filmmaker that people in, in the West, uh, West in, in uh, North America anyhow know best. Are there any of you here who would uh, cite him as an influence on your work? I don't see much of it in your films, but is he still relevant for you? Uh, he's, um, he's one of the greatest, and uh, uh, it's, it's practically impossible to um, not to be influenced by Theo, and uh, also not to be influenced from uh, his passion for filmmaking, and uh, his uh, constant, um, uh, you know, uh, approach to to expand the medium and to not to be afraid of uh, making something uh, controversial or making something hard to watch so uh, uh, we like it or not I mean I I, I love it um, uh, Theo is is our heritage and uh, uh, is, is, is a huge uh, um, uh, 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 statement uh, for for our uh, ethnic uh, filmmaking. Anyway, so mm-hmm. any other thoughts, Menelaos? Anyone else? I, mean, I think, um, in terms of trying to become such a big figure, there's no there's no point. But you just have to try. You have to try, and it's a it's a long process actually being s- such a successful <laughs> and ma- a master of cinema. So um, I think each one of us here is trying to create their own um, character in film. I think with us, actually, we're kind of unashamedly kind of embracing him and actually have made some small nods to him with our film and some references. So there's no... For me, it's not a problem. It's not a question of trying to think, no, we don't want to look like we're looking at his work. So Mm -hmm. So the Wolf is the film that seemed to me to, to have the most of the the tone, anyhow, of some of his films. I mean, in, especially location-wise, I yeah. think not many Greek films uh, venture out a lot, which is quite um, weird for me because the, the minute I walk out in the countryside in Greece, uh, I, I, I mean, the richness um, of the culture, everything. Uh, so it was the first place we wanted to, to go to, just outside rather than stay in the safety of Athens. But it's a choice. I mean, his uh, extended uh, location hunting mm-hmm. uh, is impossible <coughs> to go to one place where people would say, "Oh, actually, Angelopoulos uh, filmed here." Uh, you know, uh, that I mean, it's, it's impossible to go to the countryside and not find one single place where where he's he hasn't been. It's, it's, uh, 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 so, and that's that's another heritage. So searching for the location again and again and again. Uh, that's him for three, four years, mm-hmm. uh, having a photographer with him and traveling uh, around Greece. I mean, I come from north of Greece. Uh, a lot of, uh, of locations that uh, I use, he's been there uh, before, 
And uh, I, uh, as a child, I remember him coming to our area and uh, looking for locations and uh, doing his research. So, uh, definitely. Interesting. Let's open it up to you and your questions. If you've got any uh, questions or comments for the filmmakers up here about uh, either any one of their individual films or any more general questions about the uh, situation of, uh, of filmmaking in Athens right now. So any, yes. Hello to all. Uh, since you have the Greek DNA in your filmmaking, that's by definition and by default, how European or how global do you think when you make your films? How European or how global? Yes, I are mean, outside uh, Athens, outside Greece, outside the Greek audience, the, the specifics of, uh, of being Greek and making a Greek uh, primarily for the Greeks. <laughs> anyone like to take that? I think we, we didn't look really beyond the village that we made the film in, so <laughs> <laughs> for us, we, we're happy to, to have traveled and for people to have seen it. Mm. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you never think about uh, just the Greek spectator. I mean, you're thinking about the spectator in the world. I mean, cinema is a visual language and it's addressed to the world. At the same time, your subject can be very local, but in a way so precise that can be reached universally. What I believe is that uh, what happens now in Greece, it is uh, kind of the spearhead of uh, what happens in Europe. I mean, the way I see it is that um, in Greece now we live up to some point the bankruptcy of uh, modern or the bankruptcy of what used to be Western civilization. It sounds big, but I think it is like this at some point. So I believe that um, it is a place that portrays what is happening to our world. Also, cinema doesn't really have borders, so I don't think you're making it, creating it just specific to a place. You're obviously making it for the humans, for everyone. Um, it doesn't just apply to Greece, any of the films that we've made here, it can reflect any family and have associate, create associations between other families in other countries. So I guess when you're making a film, you're, you're, you're thinking like a human does, <laughs> not like a Greek or a... Okay, it's a question here. Maria. Okay. Um, my name is Maria Katsunaki. I'm a Greek journalist from Kathimerini newspaper. Um, watching Greek films uh, here in Toronto, it was a completely um, different experience uh, than watching Greek cinema in Athens. My question to all of you uh, is at the same time an observation. There are as many depictions of, uh, of Greece as the number of film that we've seen. Uh, what is the most interesting thing about Greece, according to each one of you, that you want to communicate to international audience? Hmm. Who would like to start? <laughs> Menelaos? <laughs> I can answer to you. I would prefer to speak Greek because my English is bad and you're Greek also. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the main, uh, the main issue are our stories. You know, I think we do have an interpreter if you'd prefer to yeah. speak in Greek. Oh, it's okay. Uh, the, the most important thing is our stories. And our stories, uh, I don't know if our... Greek, uh, limited Greek or something, I don't think so, but I think it's uh, our biggest weapon to face all this situation and uh, to narrate stories. I believe that Greek people, they use stories for everything, even for to say good morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with this weapon, we can create films. This is our Greek privilege. Uh, and uh, this is the way we can do cinema nowadays. Uh, I hear a lot about why the new Greek cinema. 
I think it's why, be not because of the subjects and the unspoken thing, as Alexandro said, but because of the way where we are forced to make films nowadays. So stories is the only thing, and if we are honest and ready to narrate a story in the best way, then we will do good films, and it's a bigger privilege that these films are Greek. Here in Toronto, we had an opportunity to show our films in uh, an American audience, which is different. I was really happy in uh, both, sorry? Yeah. <laughs> North, yeah, but North America, be, I think because, mean, yeah. because it's a festival, there are so many people from uh, U United States, all over America. And uh, in both uh, screenings, I was really happy after the in Q&A because I met people with great compliments. I couldn't believe great remarks about the films in Greece and uh, great acceptance. And this is important. So I believe, and this is uh, from a question I've heard before, that if we can find a way to show our films, even in Greece, we can have the same reactions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my perspective is that of an outsider more. But what I see like uh, sticking out or very extreme in Greece, is, uh, which of course is also universal, is that you, um, the necessity to re reinvent yourself. Because you have, like, you know, you have the old generation or you have a power that's, um, or an energy that wants to keep everything the same, but it doesn't really continue. Every, it can go on like that, you know, and, and there's obviously conflict. And then you have um, young people or you have people that understand that and they want to do things different. Mm -hmm. And as we see nowadays in the world, that's a big question. Like, there's, can we go on like that? Or what are the changes we need to do in order to have a positive future? So that is something that, is, that you see like very extreme now in Greece because there they face it like they, what you call the crisis is basically that. It's not an economic crisis, it's that. And um, that is something that is happening international too. Like I don't think it's something that is specifically only in Greece. Thank you. Uh, we are going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately. We've uh, run out of time, but I just want to thank all of you for bringing your films to Toronto, to the city, to city. Something unique happening in Athens right now, and I, I salute you on your courage as filmmakers on working with reduced means in very difficult circumstances, sometimes with an uncertain audience. I think you're doing remarkable work. So thank you to all of you, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it today. Please join me in welcoming and thanking uh, the filmmakers from Athens.